All right, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe we are live. I have no idea if this is actually working. Uh, I, th I th it's working. <laughs> it's working. Do you hear us as well? I hope people hear us. Well, if you're in the, if you can hear us in the <laughs> chat, please say kappa. If you can hear us, a kappa would be much appreciated. Sure. All right. I see a warty kappa in the chat, but I mean that one doesn't count. I'm do not sure if that's alive. enough uh, kappa. I have no idea if this is actually right. working. Let I, me just I, introduce this to you quickly to you guys. Do we you hear us as well? Alfa de Rijn. And why well, with me is of course Loco. What's up? What's up? Kappa. We're going to be the first match of the day here at the Dutch much Star Catholic Championship right. Finals, also known as the I see a warty kappa in the chat, but I mean that one doesn't count. I I can barely hear you. Sorry. What's it called? It's called the Dutch Rank DSCL Open. There we go. Well, like finals. Yeah, we got so, lots of capitals in the chat, so really <laughs> Nice, you guys can actually hear us, that's great. Yeah, so first game coming up should be Marshall versus Blue Zealand, correct? I have the schedule right here. I, I, sure, I can sure. Barely hear so if anyone so wondering, right. we're What's it called? It's casting from a bit of a different area right now. We're going to be switching over to the main stage in a little bit after Hearthstone is finished up. We got a bit of a ghetto <laughs> setup as it is at this nice, point, but we're going to get there. Yeah. I'm sure uh, we have a sound loop going. Oh no, that's a bad thing, Bel Noir. Do we have a sound loop going? Right here. I, I, sure. I can sure. So there's a piano as well in the background in the same the place. If there's a sound loop going or if anyone have any issues with this stream whatsoever, uh, we're going to treat this first game as sort of like a test round. Obviously, this is going to count for a tournament. There. Right. Uh, sure. But uh, we have a sound loop obviously, going? Oh, uh, no. that's a bad thing, Bel Noir. Oh no, it's the NASL sound guy. Is he here as well? Oh no. So there's a piano as well in the background. Um, the if there's a sound loop going, or if anyone have any issues, just check all the Chrome tabs whatever. that are open. Uh, we're yeah, this one is probably not beautiful. Like yeah, okay. Oh, oh, just, just turn it. Just delete it. Just turn it off. There we go. All right, we, got we got it, boys. We're professionals. We got this. Alrighty. This is unlistenable. Should be fine right now, guys. Apologies for that. We had one of the Chrome tabs open ourselves with the stream. Um, should be it, though. <laughs> Whoa! You guys hear that piano in the background? Yeah. It's I'll the one and only. Hold on, hold on. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Wardy. Thank God. All right. There we go. Yeah, so if you guys have run into any issues here, definitely do let us know. Yeah, we need you, Chad. We need you to be our, our savior in this time. Pretty much. Game. Pretty uh, much. Even though we... I think we're going to be doing fine. We already have Insane joining the lobby, and Harsim's already there as well. Yeah. So this first match is going to be go going on the way. And let's just talk about the game for a second here, because we got a new patch, a brand new patch, hitting two days ago. <laughs> no, no, no. It's been like a week, but it's okay. Oh, right. Okay. Two, two days since you woke up after... Uh... A severe hangover. <laughs> no, 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 I'm right. No, we, we do have a pretty sick game. It's gonna be insane versus Harstam here. Yep. And, uh, Just gonna let us uh, or let the the guys that are hosting the stream and whatnot uh, ready that, or let them know that we are ready to go. Uh, lobby is already created, yeah. so I think we're we're gonna be jumping into the first game very soon. Yeah. So what's kind of funny is, you know, I think he's been doing do this for years, but Harstam was warming up as Terran. And I think he always does that at tournaments. You know, he plays Terran, 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 and then he has to play an actual game for, you know... Really? He does that? And then he goes plays... Paradise. I've seen him play... I've seen him play Terran quite a little bit, or quite a little bit as well in general, but... Yeah, well, he does that. I'm huh. pretty sure he does. It's, uh... You know, he's not... His APM is not as high as some other players uh, who I've seen play off-race. Some players play off-race, and their APM doubles, but Harstam not so much. But still, it's pretty fun to watch. And, uh... Yeah, it should be should be good. Got some ready. You know what's even more surprising is that no, Vardy ready. can actually play oh, piano. We're hosts. We're gonna, we can start the game. Oh, we can start the game. <laughs> Woo! All right. All Looks right. like we're good to go. We're gonna be jumping into game number one here very shortly. Yep. Did you know that Vardy could actually play piano? I did not. <laughs> no, I consider myself sometimes a slight bit of a multi-talent, but this guy is on a whole other level. Exactly. All right, guys. So once again, if there are any issues whatsoever with this one, we can switch over. We are indeed into the first game. We are going to be Please playing. Please do let us Frozen know. Temple. All right, let's show him the magic with the. With, yeah, I'm See, gonna I'm, let you I'm, I'm that out. yeah, okay. So here's the thing. I'm gonna be doing the observing for right now. Um, we're gonna try our very best. But anyways, in the top left corner of Frozen Temple, we got none other than the red Protoss, known as Harstam. And in the bottom right. We got the Terran player, known as Inzane. He's going to be spawning with the green pieces. So, like you said, we do have patch 3.8 here. Um, how is your how is your you know game knowledge right now? Do you have any any new strategies that you've been seeing a lot in this particular 
matchup? Or? I've been seeing a lot of good stuff from Terrans, uh, which involve mech and ravens, which are sort of the same. Uh, especially against Zerg, Terrans seems to be a bit desperate. They're either going for our early Reaper all-ins or doing uh, Hellion, oh, I mean Hellbat pushes. Uh -huh. uh, but in, you can also do this This really, I would, I would describe it as a dank build, where you go for a rather early raven and continuously harass the enemy worker line with auto turrets. Because those got increased buffs. Yeah. With higher attack. So it does work very well. And against Protoss, it seems with Cyclones mixed into the army, you can actually get a pretty good mech army going these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for, for like, it, it's funny how the how the, the the Raven all of a sudden is a unit that is actually legit in many instances. You see it quite a bit in Terran versus Terran as well, and it's quite surprising because when I originally read the patch notes, I didn't think that would be you know having that many yeah, issues. Yeah, I had the same thought. It was like, oh, Raven got a bit of a damage buff, Ooh, a big deal, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really really impressive. So we do see an expansion for both players here, yes. opening up with macro builds. Now the nice thing is that since it's a new patch. There's going to be a lot of strategies that are still up for grabs. There's not really, you know, one go-to build right now for any of the matchups. Obviously, players are still figuring out exactly what is going to be, you know, better than than the other builder. So there's definitely room for a lot of, in particular, two-base and three-base aggression. Yeah. Um, one-base builds do usually get counted out rather quickly, but so far, um, we've been seeing a wide variety of strategies in pretty much all of the matchups. Yeah. Uh, just let us know, guys, if there's any problem with... Uh... You know, with with anything you see on stream, like uh, like maybe audio or video wise, um, that would be great. Uh, build wise, we're seeing actually very familiar builds, like you mentioned, very macro-ish. One, the Terran opening with a Reaper, and uh, the Protoss going for an Adept first, which does give him not as much as it used to be, but it does give him more uh, scouting potential because of the shade. Uh, playing very safe with the Mothership Core, and Insane is just gonna try and peek around, see if he can scout out any structures, and he does see the robotics facility from Harston, which can indicate. You know, some builds it could be something like a DT drop if you were to want to be, do something sneaky. But usually seeing uh, an early robotics facility is not a very threatening thing. Ooh, yeah. So as of late, it's quite common for players to go from Dark Templar into an Archon drop or go just train into an Archon drop. We do exactly. see that set up right now with the Twilight Council. Um, it kind of depends on when we see the extra gates go down. But so far, it seems pretty straightforward. We actually do see a cancellation right there on the attachment right there on that factory. Yeah. Um, interesting. He's going to be jumping into a starport here instead. I wonder if there's any scouting information uh, that triggered that to happen. Once again, Reaper going back in, trying to see whatever he can. Yeah, he's going to get a good scout of this time, also scouting Ooh. the back. Sees two gates there being built, uh, along with the Twilight Council. Picks off a probe, very nice control there uh, from Insane, who is actually managing to escape with his Reaper. Interesting. So we we actually see three gateways here go down, rather than four. Hmm. And that usually does indicate that it's going to be something a little bit more adept-focused. We may see uh, very well that third base go down relatively shortly for Harstam. Kind of depends on what the strategy is that he has in mind. We also do see that first observer uh, coming out on the map here. And yeah. that Reaper still going to town, just checking out exactly what's going on. And with the first medevac on the way, it's looking very solid right now for Insane. All right. Thanks, uh, chat, for giving us a bit of feedback on the audio. That really helps. Uh, I'm getting flashbacks from uh, uh, from Home Story Cup, where the casters would call out things, and we, we we get a bit of a call out on a strategy, and then something else would happen. Like you mentioned, adept, and then all of a sudden he starts blink. So it looks like a bit of a mid-range uh, stalker build right now from Harstam. I think Harstam definitely has the control uh, and you know strategical advantage in this game to play it safe throughout the mid game with a more uh, you know all-round army. Uh, I gotta give it to him. Oh, he's actually making a raven. I'm yeah, like yeah, yeah. The, the, the unit that you were just talking about just now. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, a unit that usually was only made as as a super late game type of army focus, or you know maybe as a, a bit of a gimmick. But right now it's actually a legitimate unit. As it also is just simply more powerful and more well rounded. Now Harstam is fully aware of the setup here. He knows that there's no third command center going down. He sees that there are two more barracks here instead. And actually, we go straight up to. Five, or four more wrecks right here, up to five barracks here in the main base of the Terran. Beautifully reading here what's going on. All right. Um, wow, yeah. all right. So in-game uh, sound is going to be something we're going to be fixing in the next next game. Uh, there seems to be a drop. I don't see a drop. <laughs> and anyway, we have to... F oh, yeah, insane drop, of course. All right, so Harstam is now expanding towards the third, uh, adding on Immortal Swiss Army, just going for a very well-rounded composition, whereas I think insane... 
will be trying to do some sort of stim, uh, stim timing along with Siege Tanks and the Raven. Of course, the Raven with the point defense drone is very good at negating Stalker damage. Uh, so that should be a very, you know, if he does the timing push against a Stalker heavy army, that can actually be very effective. Uh, I like this move from Harstam now. He definitely senses that Insane isn't really doing anything right now. So he's going to be the one that puts on a bit of pressure. He's got the Observer for a bit of high ground vision. Uh, and he's got the mobility with Blink, which allows him to do a lot of things. I've, I've never played StarCraft before where I'm being serenaded by Wardy at the same time. This is this is beautiful. <laughs> this is quite the experience <laughs> indeed. And not a lot of people can say that either. Now we do see a little bit of a RAS here. Harshtham is going for that third base already as it is. So I highly yeah. doubt he's really trying to put all too much pressure on here. Just sort of trying to contain the Terran here for the time being. That third Nexus is already going up here. And he is switching into Immortal play here instead. Getting the upgrade right here as well in the Twilight Council for the Adepts will really allow him to, you know, get a very strong army. And it all really depends on what Insane is um, keeping in mind right now. So his stim pack is about a half minute or so from finishing. Combat shield, uh, same deal. So he yeah. may very well go for a push out very shortly. And uh, I would not be I, surprised if we do indeed to. see a move out. He has to go for a push. Like, yeah, he should. building a third command and he stop building SCVs. I would almost not be surprised if he decides to actually pull SCVs when he finally does do this push, which I predict to be happening in the next minute, basically, when Stim hits. He's not going to wait for plus one either. It's really going to come down to Harstam uh, to be able to defend this push. And right now, uh, Insane, you know, he's built up quite the army. And this is really the time where Harstam has to start making units. He's got a couple upgrades predict uh, completing. He's got gates completing. Uh, his Dark Shrine is completing, but I don't think DTs are going to do all that much when there's a Raven uh, part of the composition. You know, he's still Chrono boosting out. Uh, okay, he stopped probes as well, that's quite good. Uh, yeah, he has to delay this push for as long as possible. But the distance on this small map this is a huge army, base yeah. is just not that, that long. We see no pylons here at the third base just yet of Harstam. Um, it's going to be very difficult to defend against this, and he may very well have to sacrifice yeah. that base depending on where Insane needs to go. Keep in mind, these are new siege tanks. They do significantly more damage than they did in the oh. past, and he can definitely blink forward, but look at all of that damage coming in here. He's going to try and target, target fire down all of those siege tanks to the best of his abilities oh, uh, with those immortals, but the Protoss army is dwindling very, very shortly and very, very uh, quickly. He's going to lose the immortals as well, and that is going to make it very difficult for Harstam to still win this battle. Insane now stimming forward, picking off all of these immortals one by one. The count of the adept is just not high enough. And GG. GG. Insane. Insane very easily takes game one against Harstam. <laughs> we got some cheering going on right now for uh, <laughs> from the one and only Vardy. Pretty game though there by Insane. Pretty straightforward. Not really making any you know major mistakes. Just simply getting a lot of stuff. Yeah, stuff is the right word here. Like, just uh, just a lot of stuff. Yeah, and I'm sort of on one hand I'm surprised that Harsim didn't identify this because he had an observer in his opponent's base, basically you know scouting out everything. Uh -huh. so he saw there was no third. He saw there were no SFEs being made. He saw a big army being made. But uh, he, he just did not produ uh, start you know start producing units in time. And I kind of question his decision to engage there at the third because he could have just sacrificed that uh, and get an additional warp in of, uh, of Adepts. Uh, apparently, second map is New Gettysburg. I'll try and host that as here as soon as possible. I'm going to be inviting people into this very shortly. Um, my microphone is too close. Alrighty, if you guys have any feedback, definitely do let us know. This was the first game to be casted today. Uh, so if you guys are running into any issues, uh, feel free to uh, to do let us know. Gonna be creating the game here very shortly. And apparently, uh, sorry. All right. That, that's we're, probably it. We're professionals, guys. We got this. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Alright guys, so just uh, keep giving us feedback if you want to. You guys heard me breathe and you didn't like that? Oh, come on now, guys. Um. Uh, yeah, right now we just have to invite our admin to the game. I think you can invite him from here, right? No, I can't. Huh? Alright. So 1-1 one, one currently the score, or sorry, 1-0 one, one, one currently the score for Blue Zellen. I don't think anyone really expected it, and neither did I. Um, and yeah, this might be, you know, just the thing that kind of happens in a, in a post-patch situation. But it was kind of a, a build order win, I guess. Harston was really going for something free base. And uh, it seems that Blue Zellen just, or, sorry, Blue Zellen. Insane was, of course, uh, the one that did this build. 
and he did a pretty good job uh, at it. You know, his timing was on po was on point. Alrighty. Alrighty. Um. <laughs> we got the most professional, professional setups, guys. We'll get it rolling here uh, very shortly. Anyhow, um, I've got everyone invited into the game right now. Oh, that's great. You're just here for local breeding. Exactly, JJE. Oh, that's I'm glad really, to hear that. That's the stuff. Dude, these headsets look pretty good, right? I think they, they match really well with our outfits. Yeah, it's we look very professional very here. Very silver and blackish. At least that's something that's professional. Alrighty. And with that, we're loading up into game number two. So once again, we're gonna we're gonna be switching over uh, to the main stage in a little bit. There's currently a Hearthstone tournament going on over here as well, and we're gonna be you know we're gonna be switching with them after they finish up their uh, their tournament. Yeah, uh, but for the be... time being, we're set up over here in the uh, I guess the main hall. There's a lot of Smash players here as well. Yeah, anyway. it's gonna be about six best of threes for us. Uh huh. And then we will. Uh... <laughs> Thank you. For no worries. Me. No worries. And, then, and from that point on, we will uh, we'll be switching onto the main. Uh area with you know big stage uh, and, and very professional production i can assure you all righty so in the bottom right corner we got the blue terran player currently up one to zero it's none other than insane all right you want to you want to introduce yeah, the second one you. <laughs> this is this is your time in to the shine left, we have one of the dutch hopes for the dutch starcraft league he is the rep for us he is karsten now, for anyone wondering, this is indeed a best of three, so that does mean that Insane needs to win a one more game here if he wants to, uh, you know, take this series. Obviously, Harstam is probably considered to be the favorite in this match. I mean, he is uh, one of the very best players in, in the Netherlands, and he actually just sort of got overrun there in game number one. Yeah, definitely. Like, that, that build, it was, it was just a really cut and dry game. Like, Insane made a bunch of units, and he killed Harstam. That's kind of how StarCraft sometimes goes. It's it's also in the beauty of the game, I have to admit. Uh -huh. Like Day9 once said, uh, if your opponent is doing something weird, just go freaking kill him. <laughs> just go fucking kill him, yeah. That's that's pretty much it. We uh, we did see those siege tanks, obviously, being able to siege up quite easily, and that really allowed, you know, those damage that damage really to come in. We do once again see the gateway into the expansion here for Harstam. Pretty straightforward setup. Uh, nothing unsuspecting right there. Follow up right here with the Cybernetic score, so a little bit greedy, but... All things considered, should be pretty, pretty safe. Yeah, once again, a very standard Reaper opener from the Terran into an expansion. I really like, uh, yeah, how we just play standard in every game. It's something we see more often in tournament play. Like players will usually focus on one build in a certain matchup and just focus on that as much as possible. So the map pool we are running here is going to be the one from the previous uh, letter season, if I'm not mistaken. Obviously, a lot of players uh, having a ton of practice here, but this is indeed the new patch. So it's all in patch 3.8. Where, you know, units like the Siege Tank do significantly more damage. Now, one of the changes that we did see for Protoss is a slight buff to the Zealot movement speed in the middle stage of the game. Uh, which oftentimes does come into play. But, for now, uh, we haven't really seen Harstam switch into that play just yet. Going for the Blink instead, as well as the Adept upgrade. Uh, this time around, though, we got a Star Gate. So what do you think that means? Tell, think tell it, us everything, uh, I think it Wayman. needs oracles. I always assume the worst, which when you're playing Terran versus Protoss is oracles. Not that phoenixes can't, you know, wreck your shit, but they're really uh, oracles are just really good at doing that in the very early stage of the game. Yeah, usually we see uh, either a single or double oracle into something like phoenixes. At the very least, they used to be the standard a couple of days ago. As it is right now, though, there is also a chance for you know the Protoss here to switch into Void Rays, for example. Void Rays got a, a movement speed buff. Uh, carriers have now got way cheaper interceptors oh, and are man. just working out a little bit differently. And if Protoss manages to get to that point, it's pretty insane. But if this game goes oh, into carriers, wow. that would be so cool. And this Reaper, you know, uh, very scurriedly just runs into the main. That's huge. And he's gonna get a great scout off here. He will. Oh, oh. Yeah, he will see the Stargate. I don't know if he managed to actually get the glimpse there, but it's really all the information he needs. He's gonna yeah. go ahead and start making as many Marines as possible as he was already doing. Uh, we do immediately see that engineering bay right here in production as well. So he's going to be able to get those missile turrets relatively early. And the third base uh, transition here from Insane should work out brilliantly. I mean, he's getting all of the you know proper precautions here to get rid of that uh, that initial harassment here with the Stargate. Even going for wow. the Supply Depot wall off here, making sure that these adepts cannot quite easily uh, move across the map and, and kill uh, them. Yeah, they're not going to be happy about that. They have to, have to break off this... Uh 
this depot for as much as they can. So the triple command center build from Insania is actually very greedy. And this is something that Hearthstone can definitely punish uh, by either being very aggressive, like with the Oracle, or by being very, uh, yeah, doing a very economical opener, like with the third Nexus that he just started. So he's using the Oracle for scouting at this point. Hasn't managed to pick off a single SCV quite yet. And uh, we'll have to see if he's going to try something more aggressive. Looks like he will not for now. Going for the good old scout right there with the Adept. Then realizing that the Shade Vision is a little bit smaller as it used to be. So he's going to have to get out of there. Not really being aware exactly what is going on there. Uh, but he indeed does know enough. The nice thing is, this is something a relatively new school right now for Protoss players. Where they yeah. do uh, go for the second Oracle. Even if they didn't manage to do any damage. And the real reason for that is Revelation. Ah, it will yes. carry them into the later stages of the game. And really keep track of where the Terran's army is located. Plus, they're actually really very, very good at, at taking out Marines. Yep. Uh, once the... The uh, final engagement does indeed happen. Uh, so yeah. if the Terran decides to do anything tricky, oh. there we go, a revelation going There's down. He's not going to be able to have vision of exactly where his army is located, and it's going to be extremely helpful because there's oh. no way Terran is going to move out without these units. Yeah, Insane just landed a scan on the next third next of Harstam. Sees there's already probes mining, so he should be aware that uh, the big, he's slightly behind, perhaps in the uh, you know, in the economy wise. Of course, Protoss at the early stage of the game, uh, because of Chrono Boost, is usually able to build a lot more workers. So Insane is not is not by any means in a bad economical position, but this this is definitely a macro slash eco war. Both players now heavily banking on their infrastructure, on their upgrades. Two Oracles actually flying, pick up a couple of Marines, Ooh. trying to go for the siege tank, but oh. they will not be able to get it. That was actually surprisingly good though. I did yeah. not realize that he was going to be able to do that much damage there. Picking up five kills in total on these Oracles. Obviously they're just Marines here, but they're thin in the herd. They're getting rid of, you know, any excess units here. I was uh, paying attention right here to the Twilight Council. He's yeah, currently charge. researching charge. Like I said, a slight uh, buff to that uh, to that building, or to that upgrade rather. It now gives the Zealots a base movement speed as well. That's relatively good. Honestly, it gets about 10% faster, which may not sound very significant, but it does come into play very quickly as they just close the distance a little bit faster and makes kiting uh, for Marine Marauder Medivac just, did, just more difficult. Is that actually, didn't they already get a, a speed up, base speed upgrade from the charge upgrade? Uh, I think it was the case already. Maybe it's more? Don't quote me on that, but they, okay. they, they do move out, or they do move across the map faster now right. than they used to uh, with, this, uh, with this charge upgrade. And, one of the army compositions we've been seeing quite a lot, and it looks like in this particular instance we do see the robotics facility, uh, is an army composition based around, for example, Archon, Immortal, uh, Adept, Zealot, something like that. It's, it's starting to become more and more common. And we do see a lot of gateways here go down as well for Harstam. It's going to start warping in a lot of those Zealots, which definitely will be able to do a little bit of damage. Third base has also been saturated right now for Insane, so both I... players really building up a ton of eco. This is all so familiar, the way these players are playing. This is almost Wings of Liberty-esque <laughs> type of play, because as you look at these players' build, I mean, the tanks are kind of new. Usually we'd see an earlier starport for Vikings, but what the Terran right now is just doing is getting up the free base, getting all those upgrades, and the Protoss is going for Charge Lot Colossus, which is, you know, the good old days st standard bread and butter composition in Protoss versus Terran. You know, Colossus by no means are a bad unit, they are still very, very capable of wiping out Terran Bio uh, wherever they go. Um, and yeah, it, if Insane wants to have a fighting chance against an army with more than four Colossi, he's gonna have to have some sort of air units, and well, spotting this army actually is also a really big factor. Yeah. It cast Revelation though. Look at all of these upgrades that are yeah. just about to finish up, that's huge. That makes this Terran push significantly more scary. He is forced to warp in a Archon right now instead of the High Templar. First Colossus oh. is gonna be out right now. Second one is joining in, but look at that charge doing so much damage yeah. and Harstam absolutely shredding through that army. Not really taking a break here whatsoever, not giving him any time to siege up. Yeah. And indeed the Terran player is gonna be forced home. For a second there, I was afraid that Insane was once again gonna hit a timing that Harstam was gonna be completely unprepared for, but that was definitely not the case. He got his economy starting way faster than Insane and he got his uh, Army composition is in, yeah, in order a lot faster as well. Is he gonna go for a counter attack here? It does think? look like it, yeah. Yeah, he's gonna maybe try and punish the third base of Insane, but Insane is not quite done yet. He's actually gonna stim I mean, uh, rush into the third of R7. And there's not really a uh, much more for the Palin Oak Church, but on the other side, Chargers are just charging head on ahead. We're not Colossus support. I don't think this is the best engagement <laughs> Archers have been Zelda taking pretty good, here. man! <laughs> they are pretty good. These upgrades are really going to work and. Uh, where are the reinforcements from Insane? Well, he's dropping in the main at the same time, killing a lot of probes, but so many more SCVs are being killed right now. 
This is absolutely wild here. A lot of damage going down on both ends, but Zealot's turning out to be extremely powerful, and GG is cold. Whoa. You weren't kidding. They, they did get a little bit ahead of themselves, but that 1-1 one, one, uh, clear up right there with the Zealot, I mean, that... You know, he just ended up losing about four siege tanks there for no yeah. apparent reason. Uh, so and it really allowed be, him uh... to... Uh, it really allowed him to just simply get a, a huge, uh, huge lead. And, I mean, yeah. he just went for it. <laughs> These aren't Zealots, they're kangaroos. I mean... If you look at how fast they went, that was insane. Oh wait, insane is I don't there's a There's a lot of like animals that are very fast. I don't yeah. know if the kangaroo is the best analogy well, the, the for The thing it. about kangaroos is not that they're very fast, but they always also punch and kick like really nasty. If you've ever seen two kangaroos go at it, and they're ripped by the way. Definitely I'm, I'm more, sure they are, yeah. They're definitely more ripped than the two of us combined, for example. Alrighty, so it's currently 1-2-1. One, one. I'm going to be hosting the next game on Frost. Good old Frost, Good if I can find the map that is. I believe Frost is still one of the more balanced maps we have oh, yeah. uh, in the map pool. And uh, Terran vs Protoss can just take on all these different kinds of forms with all these different kinds of strategies uh, that both players can entail. So I'm really looking forward to see what these players will have in store for us. I really think Harstam, like both players in the previous two games, decided to go for an economic opener into a timing, which is, of course, a very standard way to play Terran vs Protoss. But I would like to see Harstam you know, play maybe more aggressive build in a build that he can really showcase uh, superior control, superior strategy. Uh, but then again, if he is so confident about his play ability to play macro, then I guess he could just, uh, you know, play another economic opener, play defensive, and then go into a timing. Alrighty, so I'm trying to host up the lobby right now. There we go. I uh, got both of the players currently invited into the game. Uh, like I said, this is going to be a best of three. So we'll see, we'll see how this is uh, going to turn out. These are Cheetahs. Cheetahs. Cheetahs is a way better reference, though. Well, they were really fast, yeah. I, I can't <laughs> they were that. really fast. So it, Don't it, Cheetahs it, have like a top speed of like 100 kilometers an hour or something ridiculous like that? I think they like can that? reach over 120. Yeah, it's like, it's like absolutely crazy, but... Alrighty. Man, Ask I like the, the players tempo already. we've had going. Sorry? I like the tempo we've had going in today's yeah, yeah, yeah. guys. it's actually like, not too bad. Like, usually when you look at a, the first match of a, a game of a day, on any tournament, like, this isn't just a Dutch Starcraft League thing, this is a Dream Act, this is an IEM thing. Sometimes the first few games can be a bit... Yeah. There's, there's like, there's benefit to having a smaller production, you know? It's literally us two right now. It yeah. may, <laughs> you know, in the grand scheme of things, look a little less professional, but it can definitely make things uh, easier as well in that regard, because, you know, we're able to just jump from game to game here quite easily. You want to introduce the players today? Ah, uh, here we go, man. All right. Here in the bottom left of Frost from Team Esports Club Visualize. Nice. He's the Blue Terran in Zane. And in the top right, the Red Protoss, whose team I seem to have momentarily forgotten. I, I don't think I'm the only one. He's Harstam. <laughs> it's his year, man. It's once again I the year I of Harstam. Have you not seen... Ooh. My, my scroll button right there was stuck for a second. Uh, Have you not seen the hashtag? It's it's only been around for like four years now. Uh, it's his year every year. You know, I, I'm glad to have been part of the of the, the few, the merry, who were there to witness the first year of Hearthstone. 2012 at DreamHack Summer, I believe. Yeah, DreamHack Summer. I wasn't there. Uh, I was not there. Very few of us were. Frank was there. I remember Frank being there. Frank is there. You he know, he goes to as many events as possible. He walked around <laughs> DreamHack in a bathrobe for three days. Why? Uh, I don't know, he had the Dutch StarCraft League, like, uh, imprinted on the back. Alright, alright. It was I, his thing, I suppose. I guess that was a meme that I missed at the time. Did we have the word meme yet in 2012? Well, that's that... a good question, actually. <laughs> I think there was. I think we had memes back then. Alright. All right. Now, we do have a cross-spawn uh, cross positioning right here on Frost. Obviously, one of the biggest maps in the map pool. Um, in general, very, very large. And obviously, cross positions usually do indicate that it's going to take a little bit longer. Uh, for players to move across the map, obviously that does not mean that they're necessarily immediately going to be playing macro focus only. Still room for a lot of all-ins, but there is, you know, there is the fact that this is effectively a best of one right now. I mean, uh, it's a best of three in total. It's one to one at this point in time, and I mean, the winner of this game will end up taking the series. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, we're going to see a macro-oriented build from both players. To be honest, like you said, on Frost, that is something that is to be expected. Uh, the Reaper opening from Insane is so standard and a bit predictable that I definitely... Oh, nice, he's going to pick up the Scouting Probe. But the Scouting Probe does see the expansion just in time, so Harstam 
will be aware of the fact that he does not really have to be uh, afraid of too much early shenanigans coming from Insane. <laughs> okay. I was just scared for a second. We randomly lost vision of one of the monitors, but it looks like we're right. Looks like we're good. <laughs> Alrighty. Now the starboard once again going down right here for Harstem. Looks like he's favoring that Oracle opener at the very least like he did in game number two as well. Going for uh, a little bit of a RAS here as well. Trying to take out the Reaper to his best of his abilities. Trying to deny that scouting information. Let's have a quick look. The starboard has not been spotted oh, just yet. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, that's huge. He yeah, absolutely needs to know uh, if an Oracle is coming. Of co he's once again going for a quick factory. Well, not that quick of a factory, but just, you know, he's following up his barracks with a factory. Uh, probably once again for Siege Tank production, because he's been doing that for the past two games. So, yeah, what I think is uh, he's going to be probably going to be opening tanks. And if he's not prepared for an Oracle, he could still lose quite a few SCVs. So that's still, you know, scary. Much faster starboard this time around, and I think this may very well be due to the fact... Oh, he does know about the star, about the, uh, star gate right now as well, but... I was wondering why he was going for such a fast starboard here. Uh, whereas in the previous one, he delayed that for quite a little while, trying to, you know, really get that marine production going. As it is right now, there's already, you know, six marines out on the map. He's gonna need about, you know, he's gonna need about eight or so to counter the first oracle, so it should be pretty straightforward. And the Daring Bay just about to finish up, so he's gonna be able to start making a lot of units here, but I guess we figured out why that starport was so much earlier. Is it gonna be a Raven? Yeah, it is indeed. All right, once again, we have the Raven here from Insane. So this might indicate that he's once again gonna do that same build. Wow. And actually, he's gonna go for double turret defense. Did he actually manage to scout the starport? He did manage to scout the starport okay, there eventually. That makes sense, He's going to be pushing at the front right now with the uh, with the Adept. And that Oracle is going to try and harass to the best of its abilities. And it's going to be some double pronged aggression. Really trying to, you know, pull these SCVs out, oh. of, their, uh, out of their positioning. Oh, he's going to be gonna very take careful. fight with the Oracle. No, he will not. Whew. That was very close, though. He could have gone for it. Interesting, though, because Harstam just decided to go straight into a third base. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very reminiscent of the first map where he was also going for three bases. And it did end up sort of costing him the game. And I really feel that this build from Insane is similar, but the Widowine. That's something that he wasn't building on. Wow. Actually, there's a supply block right now as well for Insane oh, here is. for the last 10 seconds or so. That's huge. It's quite painful. He's going to be able to, at the very least, like eventually clean this up. But little things like that can easily, easily cost you a lead in this uh, this matchup. Already a nice little eco lead right now for Hearthstone. He's going to be able to pick up, um, you know, some more economy here. But like you were saying, we may very well see those extra um, extra barracks being added on here very yeah. shortly, and exactly that is what's going on. Same setup as we had in game number one. We see the switch over right here with the reactor on the starport. Going to be able to get those double medevacs out, and at this point, there's going to be five barracks producing a non-stop uh, bio army, and there's also a factory making siege tanks, as well as those medevacs. I mean, we're going to see a huge push, probably when plus one attack finishes up. Uh, I really feel Harstam, this is his, the moment where he needs to start adding on gates and stop making probes. Having a third base is great, but he needs production right now. He's starting charge upgrade. He's got plus one underway. That's all fine. But he really needs to identify what is happening. That this is once again the big push that was happening in the first game as well. He needs that, that gate explosion where he just starts adding them on massively. Doing warp hits, by the way, is fine as well. <laughs> just anything that, oh. that gets him units. Nice little split there. He's going to be able to pick off that Widowmine here eventually without taking all too many losses. And he's actually going to go for charts this time around rather than the blink right. upgrade that he went for. And I actually like that a lot better. Um, here come the gates, but I do feel they are somewhat uh, too late. Of course, the distance between the two, both of these bases has, well, it hasn't really grown because it's just a different map. But uh, there is a significant distance. I mean, Insane is now definitely starting his army production. We see Stim has started, plus one almost about to finish. Uh, Metafax, more tanks being added on. This is just gonna be uh, one big push. The composition itself feels, you know, whenever I see a Terran do a big, big push with a, with a Raven, it reminds me of the good old 1-1-1 in the, in the Wings of Liberty days, where uh -huh. it was just so incredibly strong. Um, Oh, well, here yeah. we go. Here we go. I really like the position oh. here, though, that Harstam is in. He's actually got a very powerful force. He's going to be able to make Archon as well as Immortals, as well as a ton of Zealots with back. charge. He needs to be able to spend his money. He's, his gates are only just finishing up, and he need, his army is already pretty much knocking This army front. seems far it's smaller than smaller. the one. It's very You're yeah. very right. There should be more army here for Insane to actually be able to do a push. And he might just get bum rushed here by Sun of Warp from Harstam. There we uh, go. Photon overcharge. We got uh, Pylons at the third base here. 
definitely is looking very different than it was in game number one. There's also a single Phoenix here ready to lift or start poking away, and it looks like it's ready, it's time. Oh, is he gonna go? He's gonna go. Wow, Arkham I love the that. Front, obliterating these Marines, turrets being dropped, but being quickly taken out by the Zealots. The Zealot count, though, is weathering down quickly, and I don't see that many Protoss units left. He needs to, he needs more warp, he needs more units. As long as he can hold this front and not take too many, you know, trades, uh, he should be able to, you know, deal okay, because Charizard's just get on top of the Marines so quickly. One of the siege tanks was dealt with right there, which helps out a oh, this lot. This Archon is so low energy, look at it. It hurts. It hurts when you watch it. <laughs> All I like good though. Count, though. He's gonna be able to do, uh, probably hold on here just barely. I mean, the longer this goes on, you gotta keep in mind that economy advantage will really start pulling through. Yeah. A lot of the reinforcements are across the map here, but it looks like Ugh, Terran has got enough of this, and these these siege tanks are gonna be able to do so much damage. Nice little bit of target firing there. Does manage to get a couple of them, but so far this is looking a little rough. Oracle coming from the oh, back, doing as much through. damage as is possible. He, does he have enough? I don't think so. The bio from Insane. Ah, oh, but he does drive him back for a bit there. I thought he could have taken that fight. Keep in mind, the most important part here is that those t siege tanks are gone, and Harstem has taken no economic damage. No, no, no damage here whatsoever. And really, at this point, Harstem is looking absolutely beautiful. He doesn't. He doesn't really have, you know, that much to worry for other than the the eventual aggression that's once again gonna come out of Insane. No third base here whatsoever, we can still see the Terran train move across the map, but I would say as long as he controls this yeah. reasonably well, he should be in a very good position here. Liberators are gonna be joining the Terran army here very shortly too. We'll Liberators. see if they uh, will be able to do a lot of damage. Well, not gonna get a revelation off yet, but he does position his army in time before Insane can oh. see jump just jumps right on top of this bio ball which is forced to start to step back immediately, and the Zealots, they're almost just too strong. Oh, this Liberator actually manages to kill off quite a few Stalkers, but does get taken out, and I really think that the advantage here <laughs> is snowballing for Arsene. Oh, this is actually not that good of a move. The Marines are very well split out, so without the support from the Stalkers and their Immortals, uh, this fight is going in the way of Insane. He was actually pulled a couple of SCVs. He is definitely all in in this game, and he was definitely planning to go all in from the start. Yeah, the siege tanks were taken care of. If you manage to engage a Terran player like that while the siege tanks are not quite in the greatest position just yet, as a Protoss player, you're just going to be charging forward because, you know, the siege tank is really what is scary in his army. The rest is, is you know, much more exposed, uh, I suppose. And at this point, wow, nice little bait there with the SCP. He's uh, baiting that charge. Stim, does, well, he doesn't, yeah, he does not have blink, but he's starting plus two. Immortal gets focused down. Great trade here from Insane, actually, really using the positioning and the siege tanks to his advantage. But his medivacs are completely out of energy at this point, whereas Harstam's army is still growing. The supply count right now will go heavily in favor of Harstam. He's just simply got a lot more production. I mean, this is not just a little bit more, he's got an entire extra base. And the main base of the Terran is definitely oh. mining very uh, very low. He's forced to transition towards the third base. And I think what we're going to see here is Enzane just go for one massive push once again yeah. and try and, and, and pray that he gets the perfect engagement. Yeah, that's really uh, the, the thing that he has to bank on here. Uh, I have to say the tech composition of Harstam's army is not that big. He has very little uh, area of effect damage, Ooh. only in the way of uh, Archon Splash. And I'm not sure if I actually like this engagement. It seems the Zealots are driving him rather quickly against the bio, but there is just too much Protoss army for no. Actually, that was not a very good engagement here for the Protoss. I'm not sure why he decided to engage inside of the Liberator's uh, oh, range no. there. Harstam, Definitely hurts out a lot. And he's going to end up losing a lot of his forces there, oh, getting a little bit flanking warp in these bi this bio solo, but they can retreat to the safety of the Liberator range. And there is still a siege tank here, so Harstam making things very difficult for him, where he, whereas he just doesn't I don't think to. he needed to engage there at all. No, exactly like you were saying, he was engaging into a siege top Terran with both Liberation zones as well as siege tanks. Very risky, very, very scary to do. And right now, that is exactly what Insane was waiting for. He's going to try and simply just, um, you know, start engaging that third base and really try and do the damage here. Oh man, and Insane is now getting economic damage onto the third of Harstam, who is forced to pull back a couple of probes. Harstam now adding on uh, mostly stalkers to his army no in order scans. to be able to deal with the Liberate is not very uh, optimal. There are um, no scans available here at there all. There's no a Dark Shrine finishing right up. Now. I think Dark Templar could actually yep. just turn this around. Two DTs being warped in, but where are they? There's only two, there's only two command centers, right? Yeah, and he's probably going to be dropping mules as soon as he can. There we go, there we there go. We go. One. All right, well, this is the move that Harstam needs to win this game. He wings it into... Oh, one scan goes down, but he has a second Dark Plan, Dark Tempo. He should be able to move it in any second. Now, here it comes from the bottom right side. Insane is now pushing into the third. Oh, 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 oh. careful now, careful now. And does he have oh, a second scan. scan available? But that should be the last one, definitely. He can warp in several uh, Dark Tempo if he wants to right now. It's actually seeming to forfeit his third base, and all of these probes are actually taking massive damage, and the Liberator push 
from Insane, it seems to be going almost out of control. Look at how many Liberators he has. How does Harstam engage into this? Oh, he's got to go right now, I suppose. I mean, the Siege tanks are not sieged up. This is the best of best moments that he had so far, but this is looking very, so very risky. There's almost no energy on these... Uh, oh, there's one DT right now on top, of the, on top of the bio. And this is going to force a retreat because there is no scan. This is the moment that Harstam can actually pounce and kill some of these Liberators with his Blink Stalkers. Once again, Blink forward, they're trying to do as much damage as possible. Oh, Small bio force let that bio is still run doing and damage. killed the third Nexus. Nah, it, it already was gone right oh, now. The new base has been retaken, but for the time being, this is looking rather okay for Insane. I mean, he managed to do a lot of damage there, and like you were saying, I think I think what really... Harstam just got impatient. I mean, he thought he probably did more damage than he did, and he had a big economy lead, so he, he was thinking of just cleaning up the game while he probably was not expecting that many Liberators and Siege Tanks. I mean, engaging into a Siege Top Terran player, very, very risky. Uh, now, do we, we finally see a Turk time? Command Center? Sure. How much income? Yeah. It's almost equal at this stage because of the the damage that he's managed to do. I think yeah. Arsene is transferring a couple of probes, but... Yeah, no, this is <laughs> this is still looking this is still looking rather good for the Protoss at this point in the game. Um, yes, but it's, it's, it's rough. For now. It's rough. It's rough, yeah. Uh-oh, this is not a fight he wants to take. Insane actually stimming forward very confidently. No area of effect damage here in sight for the Protoss. And he keeps losing unit by unit because of his stint bio. I'm not sure if this is a fight he should take for now, but uh, Insane you know, keeps getting all these little wins with the efficiency of the Liberator range of the Siege Tanks and the stint bio. Such a difficult game for Harstam right now. Yeah, he must be uh, he must be pretty uh, pretty upset with himself about that move that he uh, that he made Oracle. into the liberators. Oracle. Trying to go for the revelation there, not quite having enough energy. Uh, and he actually, keeps a couple of stalkers uh, too because he has to fight those liberators. There we go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, that's the best you have to do. If if that is already you know what it's what it's uh, what it's uh, making uh, making the uh, Terran player do right now, I guess oh, that's fight this. Uh, once again, he's gonna lose something. An arc on this. this. <laughs> that was good. No. That was good right there for uh, Harsim, He I keeps suppose. dancing with death and I don't like it. He loses another Archon to the Liberators. He keeps taking these fights. He manages to pick up one Liberator here, which is a good move. But still, it's... Uh, <laughs> can we keep the Uncom Tavo? Because I, I really keep feeling that Harsim is actually going to go for another fight here. But once again, the Archon is the only area of effect un un dealing units here. Uh, I like the Dark Templar though. That, how much kills does that Dark Templar have by now? Uh... This one right here has oh, one, one. Okay. but I'm assuming you're talking about this dude. Oh, he's currently only got four. There's been a lot of harass here, though, by a Whoa. lot of different Archons, or by a lot of different DTs, and so far, the economy is hugely in favor of the Protoss here. He's going to be able to start dealing a lot of damage, and uh, it looks like he's finally found a bit of breeding room. He's going to be forcing the Terran player away from their third base, or I guess what was originally their oh, main command scary, center. Though. He could get surrounded. Oh, Dark Templar. Oh. There's no, there's no Metavex anymore. These Metavex are all out of energy, and the yeah. ones that he did have uh, did end up falling. There's only a single one. So this Bioforce, every stim, uh, does definitely yeah. count. The water Arson, is not a base taken. It's, it's Arson not, so not that much great yet. has to rely on his Blink Stalker control in these fights in order to get pickoffs and Blink out without trading and losing too much stuff. Oh, he does lose a couple of Stalkers though, but so does uh, Insane, who's losing a lot of Bio. A couple Chargers in, who are now able to tank, and I don't see any Liberators anymore. So it might just be that Harstam has done it here. It seems he is broken. For now, the army of Insane, only one medifact remaining. He will not be able to keep taking these fights. Yeah, slowly but surely, that economy advantage that Harstam secured in the earlier stages of the game is, is starting to pay oh, off. Oh, SCB's and going GG down. GG, Harstam cold. in a nail-biting game of Frost. <laughs> that was close. I honestly feel, though, that that was probably closer than it had to be. Yeah. You know, like... When he initially engaged into those siege top like liberators and siege tanks, it was just him smelling blood, him just he wanting to end the game. Not it's, like this. Yeah. Know. Not like yeah, not like this, right? It's pretty much uh, pretty much as risky as uh, as it could be. But hey, it ended up paying off just Arsene fine. Arsene wins the series Arsene two to manages one. to pick up the uh, the first series. Nice. Uh, we're gonna see which game is gonna be coming up next. We'll be ca casting that next, and then uh, we'll be back and we'll play a couple break for you guys. See you guys soon.